without victory of Ukraine, we will not have country, we will not have state to work. So for key for us, it's, a, it's an existential issue for us. Dear friends, welcome to another edition of the Forum 2000 online chat. My name is Niroshini Nugavela. Today we have with us Dr. Hannah Hopko, a former chair for the Affairs Committee of the Warkona Rada Ukraine. Thank you for joining us and today we will be discussing about rebuilding a nation what money can't buy. Uh, whilst a lot of investment is required to rebuild what has been materially damaged, um, a lot more also is needed uh, to rebuild the democratic institutions, the so social fabric and the peace. Uh, through your work, what challenges does the Ukrainians have uh, in rebuilding the democratic institutions right now? Thank you so much for um, inviting me for the Forum 2000 and it's honor for me to be in Prague. And uh, Russia invaded Ukraine in 2014 and um, illegally annexed uh, uh, Crimea and you know, occupied Crimea and uh, for eight years of ongoing Russian aggression against Ukraine uh, from February uh, 24 this year Russia started full-scale escalation which is honestly saying a genocide against our nation because uh, Putin uh, personally and all his uh, uh, representatives, ministries, uh, governmental officials, they are saying that their aim is to destroy Ukrainian nation. It's not just about occupy another part of land, it's destroy Ukraine. This is why the war crimes, uh, the uh, crimes against humanity, um, um, act of aggressions and uh, uh, um, environmental crimes, Altogether, it's genocide, and I think it's really important for us, for people uh, uh, and the families who lost uh, their loved one uh, in the battlefield or during the uh, tortures uh, or kids which were raped by Russian soldiers. So we all demand justice. So it's crucially important for the whole world that inter uh, international tribunal will be happening because we, with international community, are documenting all war crimes. We receive many um, uh, testifying uh, from uh, people, victims of uh, um, uh, Russian occupiers. So, and what's happening now at the uh, occupied, newly occupied territories, uh, actually uh, infiltration camps, it's uh, like uh, during Nazi, during the World War II. So it's unacceptable in 21st century. So this is why uh, complete uh, Ukrainian victory when we defeat Russia, uh, Russian totalitarianism, it's in the interest of the whole world. So it's first military victory of Ukraine and restoration of full territorial integrity and sovereignty, then international tribunal justice and uh, then um, compensation for all losses from uh, uh, of course you never uh, will return back human lives which were killed yes but compensation for families it's number one priority and then we could start talking about um, rebuilding uh, Ukraine's economy recovery of economy uh, issues of how all destroyed uh, houses, uh, damaged buildings, infrastructure ob objects. Because uh, every day of uh, Russian war against Ukraine, we are receiving new uh, losses. So we cannot exactly say uh, what, are, uh, what is the total uh, amount of uh, damaged uh, buildings and what are the money we need to uh, rebuild our country, uh, but it's mm, more than half trillion, uh, which uh, like preliminary experts saying, and uh, because 21% uh, of Ukrainian territory is under occupation, and uh, it's more than 2,600 towns, cities, villages are also in this located, and uh, more than 38,000 of 
buildings destroyed, um, damaged. So it's a, um, it's a it's a big catastrophe. This genocide against Ukraine. So, so uh, answering on your questions is important for us to start talking with Western community. What are the legal mechanism to help Ukraine to? Uh, receive compensation and reparation after international tribunal uh, and um, of course uh, what to do with uh, seized assets from uh, Russian Central Bank also private money which are now in royal yachts in uh, luxury uh, houses and others which uh, Russian oligarchs Russian uh, bureaucrats were stolen from Russian society and which I wrote so the question also uh, what are the sources of money? What is the, uh, the legal mechanism to help Ukraine? Because to take new loans during the war and after to rebuild, I think it's unfair and Western communities um, uh, have to help us. Yeah, uh, so like you said, now the democratic process is something which requires continuous effort. After the preliminary stage afterwards, do you think uh, the old practices like corruption and uh, bureaucratic uh, processes will come and infiltrate or will become um, insurmountable obstacles in sustaining the democratic process? Well, I think uh, after the full-scale escalation, um, Ukrainian um, society demonstrates the highest level possible of mm -hmm. the fighting spirit, the same like Ukrainian armed forces. So we are now all united in our aim to win in uh, this Russian genocidal war. But also uh, people demand uh, that all previous uh, corrupted practices will be in the past. So after victory, like one of the key priorities of post-victory agenda, it's rule of law, judiciary reform, is also transparency and, uh, and accountability uh, in uh, national level and also local level when local communities, they will be responsible mm -hmm. how to build back better. So they are, the ownership belong to them. Uh, uh, and I think it's really important that civil society with Western communities, they will have mechanisms how to control how the Western money are being spent in Ukraine and because it's about trust. So it's not just about receiving money, it's about trust, trust, justice and social capital. Mm. Yes, uh, so I think since because you strongly believe in the civil society in rebuilding, uh, after the war, uh, how do you think the Russians and the Ukrainians will coexist? Is there any challenges there? I think uh, even asking such question, question, it's too early because uh, Russian society is a part of this genocide, uh, Russian genocide against Ukraine. Because Russian society never stood up against totalitarian regime. Russian society allowed uh, uh, to turn from authoritarianism to totalitarianism. So this is why a Russian society should also uh, be uh, guilty and will be remembered as not uh, preventing and not stopping the uh, Kremlin regime from uh, doing all atrocities, war crimes, and even uh, many uh, Russian women, they were like allowing their men's, men to betray them and just uh, bring me some uh, refrigerators or some uh, other uh, stuff. So this is unacceptable. So this is why uh, Russian society, the same like after Germany, after Nazi uh, crimes, so they paid reparations. There were international tribunal justice, the same here. So this is really important to see. And um, repentance mm -hmm. also should be a part of this. Uh, this is the only way when uh, 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 um, uh, Russia, it's not just about regime change, when uh, Putin will be replaced on some other person close to uh, KGB, FSB or GRU or other mafia uh, clans. No, we are talking about de-imperialization of Russia, which also means that Sikh society needs to go through reparations to take this economic burden and to understand why they are paying mm -hmm. this economic price. Because compared to the death of 
uh, young Ukrainians, all the um, uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, defenders, and what they did uh, with um, Ukrainian prisoners of war, it's uh, when they burned them. So it's, it's unacceptable. So this is why I think it's too early mm -hmm. to talk about this. First, uh, Ukraine defeats Russia. Then international tribunal and uh, it's already more than 20,000 of documented war crimes so then uh, there are many um, uh, approaches how to work with an um, international court system and it's also a test for international uh, institutions from UN international criminal court how they will punish mm -hmm. totalitarianism because other dictators they just observe it just saying, okay, if the uh, uh, Kremlin regime will not be punished, then we could behave like aggressor. And yes, I think uh, it's going to send a very clear message to the entire world in terms of sustaining democracy. So I would like to ask from you, uh, what support or what's the biggest ask right now from the entire international community in terms of supporting the civil societies uh, in Ukraine? to uh, ensure the democratic institutions are rebuilded and uh, we can achieve sustainable peace. What's the biggest step? So Ukrainian institutions now they are working. So mm -hmm. parliament continue uh, its work from uh, full-scale escalation and every day they are working, adopting important legislation, uh, prolonging uh, martial law and others. So uh, focusing on uh, social payments and others. So institutions, it's a question how to strengthen the institutions. but. All civil society organizations like uh, my um, uh, NGO and uh, network, we are focusing uh, before on Euro-Atlantic integration and implementation of decentralization reform. Our uh, partner organization like Anti-Corruption Action Center or OPORA, which deals with uh, electoral democracy, all of us were focusing on main priority weapons for Ukrainian armed forces. Because without weapons, and we still need more weapons to deoccupy territories. Ukrainian armed forces sta started their uh, counter-offensive operations to liberate newly occupied territories by Russians. So this is why all uh, organizations now we understand, civil society community, that without victory of Ukraine, we will not have country, we will not have state to work. So for key for us, it's, a, it's an existential issue for us. First country has to win the war when we have place where to implement reforms, where to think about strengthening institutions. So this is main priority, weapons, uh, tougher sanctions against Russia, humanitarian assistance aid to inter uh, internally displaced people. So uh, all these issues, so this is a key because we have not just to survive, we have to win. So this is the key. And then we have started already uh, developing post-victory agenda, which also include all reform package with um, anti-corruption, judiciary reform, um, uh, custom service reform. So there are like package when uh, the best, the brightest reform-minded people, they are contributing to this. And we are also working with the huge network of local communities. So this is, yes, but first, Victory, which requires more, more weapons, and uh, when Ukrainian armed forces are capable to deoccupy territories. Okay. There's a lot of hope in all those words, and we are definitely sure that we are going to win democracy. So, thank you so much, Dr. Hopko, for joining us in uh, for the Forum 2000 online chat. Uh, Slava Ukraini! Heroyam Slava! Thank you so much.